Welcome to No Crime, No Time. I'm R.D., also known as Rubber Ducky, and Danny. Um, welcome to the channel if you're new, and um, if you're returning, well, welcome back, you guys. All right, so I've been in this um, since the beginning of 2003, well before there was a Teresa, as I'm a local. I've been doing the channel for a few years. I've had a couple different channels, and that's... I've researched the case a lot. So, I want to get right into what's going on with your screen. It's called a blackout, so there is no photographs, there's no pictures. It's just a black screen. It's just me chatting with you. So, I want to talk a little bit about Cuss Road. So, for those of you that aren't as familiar with Cuss Road, um, this is definitely something that will kind of like broaden your perspective of how it's possible that we have something, how do I put this? We may have a body on Cuss Road, okay? So when I left off yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, I was referring to Brendan Dassey's lawyer, Lynn Kaczynski had made some notes and he had referred to some photographs he had allegedly, I'm saying allegedly because I'm just going by his notes. He said in his notes, he wrote that he had showed Brendan or whatever. He had him for Brendan. On this list is H1 and H2. Now we have made FOIA requests trying to get these, but we have been denied. Everybody has been denied and told that they're of no value, um, that they are being held for trial. That was an interesting one. Um, but it's been of no avail as to what H1 and H2 are. However, the handwritten note for H1 and H2 by Lynn Kaczynski, while integra interrogating Brendan Dassey, because he was Brendan Dassey's lawyer, okay? He was taking shorthand notes. He, he made a list. And in it, H1 and H2 listed body measurement dig site. And it brought up this thought process of Cuss Road because of Mike Bushman reporting the shallow grave on Cuss Road. Now, Link, Link and Colburn both respond down there and get released from it, only to be called right back down there. So something changed. Something was discovered, if you will. When you look at the interesting part about Cuss Road is we have no photographs of Cuss Road entered into evidence. And the reason is because it was considered an unrelated case, okay? Yet, Bushman is working on the clock and being documented, and his hours are being charged under the Teresa Halbach investigation, the search and find and recovery. He also is the one that later in the day radios in that they are reporting they found a burn barrel with electronics, possibly a phone. So what did Mike Bushman really find at the shallow grave that he said had a stump with it? And he went into, you know, he made sure that the stump was a very well-known part of his report on the shallow grave at Cuss Road. Well, it's interesting because Lynn Kaczynski is talking about a body, measurements, and a dig site, while Mike Bushman is talking about a shallow grave. So is it possible that the body got removed from it and therefore uncovered for photographs? So it would look like a dig site because you're uncovering the body. And would they indeed take measurements? Yes. Yet we, we can't dig into that case. 
So those pictures would have actually went to the quote-unquote unrelated case and would not have been part of the Halbach investigation. But we're not privy of that investigation on Cuss Road. And we do know there was one because we had the fire truck, we had a Calumet County ambulance, we even had state patrol doing their laser geographical photographing of a crime scene. But most importantly was Sheriff Pogel refused and stood his ground and would not let the handler nor the cadaver dog that had alerted all the way down to Cuss Road and on Cuss Road pass the crime tape. Nope. And told told the handler it's because it's a crime scene. Now, what's really interesting, as we dig a little bit deeper, is go and I want you to do your own research on Cuss Road. I have plenty of videos about Cuss Road. So, this is blackout. This makes it easier for me to get videos out there and get the information out there. And it also gives you hand on, hands on, you can do your own research too. Look up the information so that you know if it's something you believe or not. On Cuss Road, we definitely have a stump indeed. So along the side of the grass around this big, almost like an oval circle where it's a turnaround inside there on Cuss Road. In the crime photographs, the evidence photographs, we have crime tape that runs very deep along the road, midway for sure to deer camp. We also have these vehicles, as I discussed, the ambulance, a fire truck, and all these cars and trucks, and yeah. it's just a big thing, and state patrol, and everybody's down there, and they're getting pulled off the Avery case to go down there, right? They work. Not only all day, but well into the night. Well into the night. The sun's gone down and they're spotlighting a place off in the woods. And you know what's weird? There's this dark shadow within this lit circle. And I think it's the stump. And I think they moved the stump. And that's what we see sitting on the sideline with the tape coming right to a T onto that stump. And along with that stump, in the evidence photo, is a white bag laying underneath a tarp. The tarp is folded, and it's open on the end. Now, that has me questioning something. A lot. If Bobby Dassey is pushing the RAV4 on 11-3-2005, or 11-5, I'm sorry, 11 5, 2005, early in the morning. Where's the body? Could it possibly be that Bobby was pushing the RAV from Cuss Road and that the body is back at Cuss Road? Why did Bushman clock in at 4 a.m. the morning before Cuss Road became a quote unquote crime scene? See, Bushman's important to me, Mike Bushman, because he was the drug, there's the truth train. Hear it coming along? Yeah. Mike Bushman was the drug investigator. He was the, um, whatever you call that, narcotics, narcotics uh, deputy, or whatever you want to call it. And he had a dog named Duke. He was currently, during the Teresa Halbach time, retired, but listed as a reserve. I get that. But what I don't get is he actually was a conflict of interest because Mike Bushman and Duke had been on duty and were the ones to respond to arrest Steve Avery wrongfully in 1985. See, Mike Bushman and Duke guarded the perimeter to make sure that if Stephen made a run for it, they could stop him. 
Now, Bushman's also affiliated with the funeral home. He's a, he, through family, right? With the Pfeiffer funeral home. Now, this bothers me. Teresa Halbach, through marriage of her, of her father's side, was related to a, a girl that was exactly the same age as she was. Well, give her, not exactly. They were less than a year apart, I believe. They're the same body weight and the same height. Same bone structure, right? Her name was Carmen Botwell, and she was Teresa's cousin. She was found dead November 3rd in the morning, 2005, just three days after Teresa Halbach was reported missing. And yet the same day, Teresa Halbach was reported dead. How was Teresa Halbach reported dead two days before Pam Sturm allegedly found the blue RAV4? Now, Let's go back to Cuss Road and think about the timing. We're talking November 8th, right? That's the same day Carmen Botwell's funeral was. Doesn't it make you wonder about the shallow grave that Bushman found? None, no bones in the, in the Avery case that are allegedly Teresa Halbach's were ever seen by an anthropologist until two days after Carmen Botwell had been cremated, which would have been cremation date for Carmen Botwell was November 8th. The anthropologist, Eisenberg, Leslie Eisenberg, she didn't lay eyes on those bones until the 10th. So, there's so much more to talk about. But I think that's enough to stew on for now, you guys. I do love you. I love you to the moon and back. I want to get Stephen and Brendan home. And uh, go ahead, check out my other channel. 11 colon 11 space, just an empty space, tarot. So if you're interested in that, you can check me out over there. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.